we're going to talk about infinite limits. Not to be confused with limits to infinity as x, or, as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So let's take a look at what we mean. We've defined a limit to exist if the limit from the left and the limit from the right is equal. So if we look at this function we have here, we know the limit as x approaches 0 of this function does not exist. And the reason that limit does not exist is because the limit as x approaches 0 of my function from the negative side is not equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side. So that we've established. But what we need to recognize is it is important to see what happens to the function as x approaches 0 from the left and as x approaches 0 from the right. Why is it important? Well, for one thing, if we want to talk about the behavior of the graph, if we want to sketch the graph, it's not sufficient just to say it doesn't exist. Now, this is a simple example, but with more complex examples, the value, information becomes more valuable. So if I say the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side, if I look at that, I can see as x goes to 0 from the negative side, my y values get smaller and smaller and smaller. It keeps getting smaller. So I can say that that is minus infinity because it goes towards minus infinity. So you can write it like that. And if I look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of this function, that goes to infinity. x approaches 0 from the positive side, my y values get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that is what we mean when we talk about infinite limits. So even though at 0 this limit doesn't exist, we can still see how the graph behaves as x gets closer and closer to zero. And this information comes very valuable when we talk about graph sketching. So let's look at some more examples. Let's look at this one. I've got 1 minus x divided by x minus 2. Now, we've got the sketch there. We know there's an asymptote at 2. 2 is not in the domain. We know there's an asymptote. So we can see on the sketch what's happening. But now the question is, how do we do it algebraically if we do not have the sketch? If our aim is to sketch the graph, how do I do it algebraically? So let's see it what we what we do. Look at the limit. X, x approaches 2 from the negative side of 1 minus x over x minus 2. So what do we see? Now, we see on the graph x is going to 2 from the negative side, so my y values goes to infinity. But how can we do that algebraically? Well, we look at this fraction we have here. X is approaching 2 from the negative side. So it's going towards 2. So 1.9, 1.99, 1.9999999. We can't assign a specific value for X. But we can see how this fraction behaves as X gets closer and closer to 2. So my numerator is definitely going to be a negative number because it's 1 minus 1.9999999. And so, so my numerator, I'm just going to write it here on the side. It's going to be a negative number. My denominator, X is approaching 2, so my denominator approaches 0. And we know if I divide by a number that's very close to 0, I get an infinity, either the positive or the negative infinity. So I get a very large number if I divide by a number that approaches 0. So if we look at this one, x approaches 2 from the negative side, so it'll be 1.9999999 and so on. So my denominator is always going to be negative. So I've got a negative number divided by a negative number that's very close to zero. So I get an infinite number and a minus divided by a minus gives me a plus. So that one goes to infinity. Same argument as x approaches 2 from the positive side. My numerator is again going to be negative. My denominator is going to be close to 2, but it's going to be a positive number because it's going to be 1. Now, yet again, I can't assign a value for x because x keeps getting closer to 2. But I've got a negative number divided by a positive number that's very close to 0. So that gives me a very large number, but a negatively large number. So heading to minus infinity. And that's how we look at it algebraically. So we've got a couple more examples. What about x plus 5 over x minus 1. Now I don't have the sketch. So now we've got to reason them out. x is approaching 1 from the positive side. So it's numbers bigger than 1. My numerator, and this, isn't, this is just workings. This is what's happening in my head. My numerator is a positive number. My denominator, x approaches 1 from the positive side. So it's numbers bigger than 1. So my denominator will be negative, but very close to 0. So I'm going to go to minus infinity.
x is approaching 1 from the positive side, so my numerator is going to be positive. x is just bigger than 1, so my denominator is also going to be positive. So I've got a positive number. I'm dividing by something very close to 0, so it's positive infinity. All right. As x approaches 1 from the negative side, same argument, same fraction. x is approaching 1, but numbers smaller than 1. So 0 0.9999999. Yet again, I'm not substituting a value of x in. I'm just looking at the behavior. So my numerator will still be positive. My denominator is now going to be negative because I've got a number just smaller than 1 minus 1. But it's going to be very close to 0. So I'm dividing by something close to 0. So it's a very large number but this will be a negative large number minus infinity. And we're going to use that strategy going forward. So let's go a bit faster. X is approaching 2. Now, I'm not saying from either side. The reason is because I'm squaring this. So as X approaches 2, both from the positive and the negative side, this denominator is always going to be positive, but very close to 0. My numerator is always going to be negative. So this goes to minus infinity. So this function as an asymptote at minus inf uh, as a asymptote at 2 and both sides of the graph go towards minus infinity now let's look at some trig functions cos of x divided by sine of x x goes to pi now what do i know about cos you should know what quickly be able to draw the graph of cos that's pi so as x approaches pi from the negative side cos goes towards minus 1 but it's a negative number where sine as x approaches sine, pi, sine goes to naught. But let's see, is it a positive or negative? x is approaching pi from the negative side, so sine is still positive, but very close to zero. So this goes to minus infinity. And that is the graph of cot x, so you can compare it to that one. All right, so last thing to look at. The fact that a limit doesn't exist doesn't mean it necessarily goes to infinity. If I look at root x, just a quick example, root x looks like this. If I look at the limit as x approaches minus 1 of this function, this function isn't even defined at minus 1. So that limit definitely does not exist. And there's no more information we can see about that one. But interestingly enough, the limit as x approaches infinity of this function, the root of x it keeps climbing. It looks like it levels off, but all it does, it climbs slower and slower and slower. So there's no horizontal asymptote. So this one keeps getting bigger, but very slowly. So that one goes to infinity. All right. And then e to the power x, if we had to sketch it. Yet again, the limit as x approaches minus infinity of this function. There's an asymptote. So that as x goes to minus infinity, y goes to zero. And the limit as x goes to infinity, the infinite limit, x is going to infinity, so this one keeps climbing much faster. So e to the power x climbs way faster than the root of x, but both of those go towards infinity. So that's the concept of infinite limits.